Hello, Academic Biology. Mr. Darasi back again as I start our lecture on the second topic of this unit of cell division that we're going to call meiosis. Meiosis is going to be different than mitosis with a couple little things here and there that make it unique, but I'm going to try to abbreviate it to make it as simplistic as possible for all of you to understand. Again, make sure as I'm going through this video that you are taking notes additionally, either on in a notebook or on any notes I may have provided as a Google Doc form. So let's begin. Meiosis, what is it overall? It is going to be the creation or formation of gametes or sex cells. So instead of just making identical copies of somatic or body cells this time, we're actually going to be producing sperm or egg cells. Instead of producing two identical cells, we will make four, and each one of the four cells will have half the original chromosome number. So, for example, if it's a human cell, it won't have 46. It'll have 23, half the original number. If we do a quick comparison of that to mitosis, we're going to see actually two cell division stages, or a total of eight phases in meiosis as opposed to mitosis. In mitosis, we just had PMAT. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. For meiosis, we're going to do it twice. So we're going to have PMAT1 followed by PMAT2. We will be making, again, four cells with a total of 23 single chromosomes, not 46. And each one of these cells, here's one of the crucial things that we're producing, they're going to be completely different than one another. So any sperm or cell, or I'm sorry, any sperm or egg cell you make your entire life is completely different to any other one that you've made prior to that point, All right, which is kind of cool. Why does this occur? It is introducing variety into offspring. The idea is to ensure the survival of your species, humans, foxes, whatever species we're talking about. If you think about your siblings, unless you have an identical twin, you may share some things that are similar, all right, eye color, skin color, but I'm sure there is a thousand other things about you and your sibling that are different. That's because of meiosis. So let's start getting into it. If I were to start off with just a quick little basic diagram here where my cursor is, let's say that's your original parent cell, and it only has right now four chromosomes. If that cell were to go through mitosis, you would end up with two identical daughter cells that have four chromosomes that you can see, just like the original parent. But for meiosis, we're going to take this original parent cell, so let's pretend this is in a testicle or an ovary. It's going to go through two division stages. By the end of meiosis one, which is right here, you're going to get two cells that already have half the genetic information. Look, if I count my axes, it's just one, two. One, two. 2 versus the 4 chromosomes that I began with, and you can see 4 in here as well. So by the first meiosis, you've already cut your chromosome number in half. The second meiosis phase, meiosis 2, is important because now you want to get rid of these sister chromatid pairs. You're not going to still need X's. All right, over here, we got rid of X's first thing. It's going to take a separate division phase to split those sister chromatid pairs so you get 4 cells that only have 2 individual chromosomes as opposed to the original four number that we started with here. So, some important vocabulary we need to know about before we proceed. Three key terms. The first one is called diploid. Prefix di obviously means two. So this is referring to a cell that carries two versions of each and every type of chromosome. These are somatic. All the cells in your body have two versions for every chromosome. So for chromosome number one, you got a version from mom and a version from dad. Those two interact together to help make you stay alive, all right, and to maintain homeostasis. But when we we're making sperm or egg cells, we're going to be trying to make what we call haploid cells. These are cells that will only have one version for every type of chromosome. So if you, for chromosome number one, you have a version from mom and a version from dad. If I take one of those two versions away, you're only left with one. That's half the information, or we refer to it as haploid. So what that means is we're going to, in meiosis, 
have to break apart the diploid number of chromosomes that we have, or we can also refer to it as homologous chromosomes or homologous pairs. This again refers to two chromosomes, which are similar in structure, and they'll have the exact same genetic information or all the same genes that code for specific traits in your body. So if I use these three terms again on this next slide, again, we have haploid and diploid. Here, is, here are three chromosomes, one, two, three. You only have one version for each of these three types, so this is what we would call haploid. For a diploid cell or a somatic cell like our body cells, you have two versions for every type of chromosome. So you have one from mom, one from dad. This makes a homologous pair. Same thing for this chromosome, which is different. and has different information. You have one from mom, one from dad. That's another homologous pair, and so forth for here. So over here, we really only have three chromosomes right now. But over here, we would have a total of six chromosomes total, or one, two, three homologous pairs. Vocab gets a little tricky, so make sure you write those three terms down and memorize them. So for this video, I'm going to end it on just discussing the first stage of meiosis or meiosis 1. All right, I'll have a separate video where we discuss meiosis 2 and then once again compare meiosis to mitosis. But right now for meiosis number 1, it will have four stages. All right, I mentioned earlier it's going to have a PMAT just like mitosis did. But now we're going to put the number 1, or our Roman numeral number 1, after each phase. So we're going to have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. How the cell divides into two cells is going to be fairly similar to what we just went over in mitosis in each one of those stages. There will be some differences, though, so I'm just going to focus on the distinct differences that happen in meiosis 1, compared to what would happen in just regular mitosis. The overall outcome that we're going to see here at the end of meiosis 1 is we would have started with an original diploid somatic cell. That means it has two copies for every type of chromosome. So if you think of a human cell, this would be 46 total chromosomes, which has 23 homologous pairs. All right, this is going to occur in either the testicles of a male or ovaries of a female. And when meiosis 1 is complete, I would have took one diploid cell and produced two haploid daughter cells. So these two cells will not have 46 chromosomes. They'll only have 23 chromosomes. But you'll see that instead of 23 single chromosomes, they'll still exist in the X shape or sister chromatid pair form. So let's focus on the differences here that happen in meiosis one compared to mitosis. First is a process called synapsis occurs. That's when the homologous chromosomes will actually find each other and come in contact with one another and give each other a big hug or embrace. So down here in this little animation, you can see that a version for mom and dad come together and give each other a big hug. All right, so two chromosomes coming together to form a homologous pair. There's another expression that we can use, and that's a tetrad. A tetrad simply refers to two homologous chromosomes or two sister chromatid pairs combining together. So again, light green and blue over here. This would be mom's version and dad's coming together. This is one homologous pair or one tetrad right now. And you can still see that the chromosomes are in the sister chromatid pair form. Now when this happens, this allows something that never happens in mitosis to occur, which is really the important part of meiosis. So due to tetrads forming, you're going to get a process called crossing over occurring, where those two chromosomes, those two homologous chromosomes, or tetrad, actually exchange genetic information. And down here in this animation, you can see the purple chromosome, when it embraces the light blue one, say purple is from mom, blue is from dad, see how they're exchanging chunks, like pieces of themselves? That happens randomly and can happen in any portion of the chromosome. It can happen up here. 
It could happen just down here. It could be the whole purple strand gets exchanged with the whole blue strand. And that's happening for every homologous pair that's in the nucleus at that point. All right, so what you're doing is you're creating variation and new varieties. You can see that right here with these two after crossing over that's done that has never existed before. So each chromatid, half of the X, is now different. And all of this leads to variation and evolutionary change. You might have heard the expression survival of the fittest. Sometimes the fittest individual is just the one who got certain genes and a certain combination from crossing over that gives them a chance to survive as opposed to someone else. And the third key difference, here's just another little demonstration here of a homologous pair coming together, embracing and undergoing crossing over. You can see how they've exchanged bits and pieces. The third key difference in meiosis 1 compared to mitosis is how the chromosomes separate. So in meiosis 1, it's tetrads or homologous pairs that split, not sister chromatid pairs. So this is the way it really looks. So remember back in mitosis, the individual sister chromatid pairs lined up along the middle and then split during anaphase? That doesn't happen here. During metaphase of my meiosis, they line up as homologous pairs or tetrads. And then during anaphase 1, it's the tetrads or homologous pairs that split. This is what leads to the two first daughter cells having half the genetic information. Not like in mitosis, where you're completely splitting the sister chromatids pairs in half, and you're getting one identical version of each chromosome going each direction. So due to how they line up and separate is what leads to your first two daughter cells being actually haploid. So to finish up this video, overall the outcome of meiosis 1 is we're going to make two cells that are now haploid. So that means if they're human cells, they'll have 23 chromosomes that are still in that X shape. We can also call them sister chromatid pairs. Instead of having 46 single chromosomes. So we're going to need a second division to split the remaining sister chromatid pairs that are still in the X shape. So down here in this picture, interphase, we get to prophase number one. You can see the homologous pairs have come together via synapsis. Crossing over is occurring where they're exchanging genetic information. And the third difference is, see how they're lined up now? They're lined up as tetrads or homologous pairs, not individual X's. So by the time T anaphase 1 happens, and then telophase 1 and cytokinesis, if I could draw a circle right here, and then right here as well, you would get two cells that are now haploid. They'll only have one, two, three chromosomes as a pair compared to the original six that we had. So real fast, if I can drag this through for you, the idea is we're going to be making sperm or egg during meiosis. And they will be used to have fertilization to create a new child. So we were all one original diploid cell after a sperm and egg fused. Meiosis overview again. We're going to take one diploid cell in a testicle or ovary, put it through meiosis 1, split the chromosome number in half, go from 2 to 1. But I don't want sister chromatid pairs, so they'll go through a second division in meiosis 2. We'll get four cells that have only one chromosome, half the amount that you started with here, which was two. So if I just quickly drag through this, prophase 1, crossing over occurs after synapsis happens. So here is synapsis, tetrads form or homologous pairs form. Crossing over occurs next, they exchange genetic information. And then eventually our third key difference is the chromosomes line up as tetrads or homologous pairs, not individuals. Eventually it's the tetrads that split. And then after telophase 1 and cytokinesis happens, you have two brand new cells that each only have two chromosomes as opposed to four that we started with in the original parent cell. All right, hopefully this helps clear things up a little bit, and I will talk to you soon.